This is Tessa Jeffers with PremierGuitar.com. I'm here with Chris Stein, guitarist for Blondie. We're at the Chicago Theater. How are you doing? Good. It's all happening here. This is a beautiful old place. We're in a double bill show with Blondie and Devo, and so Chris is going to run through the rig he's using tonight for the show. So my current favorite guitar is my lightweight XOX Audio Tools, carbon fiber, very sexy guitar. You've been using this for a long time? I've been using it since I got it, yeah. And I can't go, I have finding it difficult to go back to wooden, heavy guitars after this. This weighs four pounds. And what's it made of? Carbon fiber. It's poured, poured carbon fiber. It's kind of like a racing bike. And it's just awesome. It sounds great. And it's completely unaffected by, by weather or temperature. You so can, is it like really light? It's very light. And you could probably throw it into a swimming pool and pull it out and play it. <laughs> Which is great. Have you done that before? No, uh uh. But it got stolen in Glasgow and was returned. Wow. Through a, the guy at the pawn shop called the cops because it, it was so weird. Is there any. Are you the only one with this guitar? There's a bunch around. I think there's some around. These guys, you can find it on the internet, XOX Audio Tools. So I'm a supporter of theirs. So, what kind of pickups does it have? Just some kind of Humbucker guys. I'm not even sure what they are. Maybe DeMarzio's. Pretty cool inlay there. Yeah, it's great. They have this is a long scale one. They have short scale ones too. So is this your number one? Yeah, I just yeah, I don't really change guitars. I don't break strings. I play very lightly. I have a quirky style of playing. Um, I play with finger picks. Michelle. What do you prefer about that? Uh, I just have always been doing it. You know, I, when I when I started, I was when I was a little kid, I was watching Earl Scruggs, you know, the banjo player, and I just thought that was really neat. And then I. These guys. I use two metal ones and one plastic one. So do you play other strings then, like banjo and other strings? A bit, and I play, ba I play bass with the finger picks too. I just always been playing with finger picks. I mean, I play well with my fingers, but your fingernails aren't reliable enough, and um, it gets a more even velocity hit when you're using the picks. So are those your custom picks, or do you use a certain kind? I buy them. I just use with national metal ones and Dunlop usually for the thumb picks. Do you prefer a certain kind of strings or are you just... I use uh, uh, nines and sometimes tens. It's no, no brand. All right, Chris, so what kind of guitar is this? This is a DBC. A Dean Selinsky guitar? Yeah, Dean Selinsky guitar that he was... I, I don't know if he's even doing this company anymore. I heard he may have left it. This is also super light and I use this occasionally. Tommy got a black one. I had this it's really thin. Gunmetal. Yeah, it's super thin for hollow body. It's great. It's called an alienado, I think. Super pretty. And do you have any idea what kind of pickups? Probably DeMars. Yeah, just, again, but I'm not positive. I'm not a big, you know, I'm not... Do you, do you know what songs you use that on? No, I haven't used I just use the one guitar. I never switch guitars. Oh, yeah, I, I never break that. strings. I never switch guitars. It's just a backup. Um, yeah, it's just there. Yeah. Occasionally. I've broken three st strings in 40 years because I play really lightly from the, with the finger picks. So do you have other backups of your number one guitar? Nope, that's the only one. That one has survived. That's why we were perturbed when it was stolen, but we did get it back. <coughs> the effects are really minimal. Um, Tommy's are more elaborate. I like this. I've got this Deja Vu pedal. It's great because you can tap it without turning it on, unlike the standard Wencher Mahusit that everybody has. These guys, you have to turn them on before you can tap the tempo into them. And then really, I hardly ever, all I'm using for these shows is just this, the old tube screamer and this compressor. No delay? Yeah, this guy, that's oh, it. That's, uh, that's about it. That's, and, you know, these, I'm just trying this one out tonight, the Digitech, uh, what is that, a valve distortion thing. That's it. I'm really, I really do basic stuff. I try to make more sounds. With my fingers and volume and that, then I do with the pedals. So I, I mean, I'm using them all the time, but both of just these two, and then a couple of settings on the amp. I'm frequently hitting the pedals in the midst of songs, in the midst of licks, just to emphasize some little section of it. The compressor I use a lot for, you know, to emphasize certain things, make them come out. I can't always rely on the sound guy to pump up the volume in the right place. So. So what amps are you playing through tonight, Chris? Lately I've been using the uh, Mesa Rectifier guy, which is like a boogie kind of, which has three channels. I'm using all three channels. Mostly I stick to the middle channel, which is sort of a crunch, but we have, I have a clean, clean channel for 
one or two things and a little more distortion for one or two things, but not, not, not a lot. Mostly I'm in the middle channel. Have you always used Mesas? No, nah, I've used everything over the years, you know, Fenders, this and that, old commercials, the whole deal. This is pretty reliable. It doesn't crap out. It's a nice amp. Sounds good. And the house guy likes the tone of it. So, so are there any particular songs on this tour that you're enjoying playing live? I like generally. I like playing the newer stuff. So we are doing it. I'm excited to hear it tonight. I haven't heard. Yeah, uh, I like. I mean, whatever is like the last song that we added is kind of the most fun. So we're doing a cover of Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Relax, and we're doing that Ellie Goulding song, um, Lights. Really? Yeah. So those, for me, those are kind of the most fun. But there's always an audience connection to playing the old things. There's emotional content, you know, as Bruce Lee said, emotional content. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when the audience gets involved with something, then I, it helps me get more involved with it. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. I hope you have a good show tonight. Yeah. It's your last show, right? This is the last show with so Devo. You're going to rock out hard this tonight. Yeah, yeah, this is the last show with Devo. Those guys have been awesome. They have some really quirky gear. You should talk to them too we did okay yeah. <laughs> the bobs the bob and bob yeah well, we saw the potato yeah the potato spud guitar yeah they're great i really enjoy being out with them they just don't go out that much because mark has a full-time job well Thanks, thank you very much i'm here with tommy kessler guitars for blondie how are you doing i'm good good we're in chicago at the shamelessly, chicago shamelessly, theater <laughs> shamelessly promoted. What, what do you have there it's my good <laughs> one of the many guitar picks over the years <laughs> that have been collected in this rig <laughs> Well, at least you're proud of it. So oh, we're yeah. going to take a look at your guitars now. Go ahead and what are you playing tonight? Uh, let's see. I opened the show with uh, this one right here. This is a Cower and uh, Daylighter. This is his uh, semi-hollow body, carved top. And I have it, of course, because I'm shameless, I have it in Blue Sparkle. What do you like about that? Uh, the Blue Sparkle. <laughs> I, love spar I love Sparkle guitars. I have a fascination right now with uh, Sparkles and Bigsby bars. Does so, it, I think I've gone back to the 50s. Does it distract you when you're playing the sparkle or? No, no. Mesmerize? No, but sometimes I do look down and I go, God, it looks so good, sparkle. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's got Big B, uh, Bigsby Bar. Um, it's set up like a Les Paul. Two volumes, two tones. And it's got a, a Wolf Tone pickups in it, P90s. This is a uh, Wolf Tone is in all the Cower guitars. Um, so the, is this is stock except for the Bigsby or is this no, how this they? Is, no, I mean, these aren't, these are all made to order by uh, Doug Cower. They're all, you know, he, he makes them, I think him and maybe one other person. Oh, okay. So yeah, he kind of makes, you know, this is the body shape, the, the daylighter, but that's, uh, yeah, in pretty much everything else you can get whatever you want done. So, Where's he relocated? Uh, he's in, uh, I want to say, he's in California, uh, Sacramento area. That's, so, and this is a three-way toggle, semi-hollow body. It's, uh, this is great. Is that your number one? Uh, it's the one I still start the show with. I play I play this one or the uh, or the or the black cower, the most these days. This is a. So you just call it the black cower, or is it yeah. called something? Well, this is this right here is called the Starliner. Now this one is a prototype. This is the first one, wow. prototype number one. Uh, this is his uh, single cut solid body. So, so did you help in the design, or wh why do you have I'm, one I'm number one? In the art in the in the research department. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good job. Yes, I'm helping in the go play it around the world and tell me what uh, I need to I need to change on so it. So how's it playing so far? It's great. It's great. He literally built this thing in like three weeks before we came out. So uh, we've had a handful of little adjustments on the neck because you, know, you don't, you don't, it, that happens. But as far as the guitar itself, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It used to have a big speed bar on it as well. And we haven't uh, cleaned it off. We use these, he, he uses, um, and I'll show you on the other one. See right here. He has these plates underneath the Bigsby, oh. so the plate literally only it uses this these two holes right here, and then you put the Bigsby on top of it. So then you don't actually have to drill in new holes. So you can go back and forth between a tailpiece <laughs> and a Bigsby. So have you had a Bigsby on that one? Yeah, yeah. There was a Bigsby one on this one originally. You can see the the marks from the, oh. the thing. <laughs> so, but I think it's like a little I don't know. Ramy, my guitar tech, so that he 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 could get it off, but. You know, I don't really care. Yeah, these things are going to be. <laughs> if, if you see the guitar, I've been playing for a couple of years here. It's it's destroyed. Does that have wolf tones too, or yeah, this has wolf up? tone, wolf tone humbuckers. Same same deal. Four vol. Uh, I'm sorry, four knobs, two volumes, two tone, three way toggle, 22 frets. They're uh, they're all Les Paul scale length. Every guitar I have here is Les Paul scale length and 22 frets. 
and uh, most of them are two-piece bridges except for the big speed bar. And do you use a certain kind of strings? Mm-hmm. Uh, elevens. Uh, we use the... There you go. The Ernie Ball. <laughs> Eleven of Proof. Nine. Evidence. Uh, tons of them. Tons of them. Um, yeah, I use all the... That's what I use on all my guitars. And if I, if I have a Strat, then I play it uh, with tens. Or same, you know, same brand, Ernie Balls, with it, whatever the ten to... Whatever the gauge is, 46 probably, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, but anyway, this is this new model. It comes out in January, and uh, so far it's great. You know, I haven't, I, other than, you know, having to make some tweaks on the, adjust, on the truss rod, which for a three-week, you know, a month-old guitar. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. So and, uh, all my guitars have these, these couch straps, which I love these things. Did you say couch? Couch. Yeah. Every single one of them. It's a good brand because they're, they, they kind of recycle old car material. Okay. Are they comfortable? Yes, they're very comfortable. I like them because they look like leather. And they feel like a couch? And they feel like a couch. Yeah, you can <laughs> sit on it all night and, and, and watch a band play. And the, uh, but they move like, uh, like polyester and nylon straps, you know, so they move, which I like. I, I, I like, I like the, the feel of the nylon and the move. You know, they move on your shoulders and stuff. But uh, I like the way leather straps look. But leather straps will stick to you all night long. And these don't. So. And the fact that, he's, uh, that they're recycling material, that's never a bad thing. And they, they use like old uh, car, you know, car seat and vinyl, you know, designs, all these things. Are, and this is like a one, this is a limited edition Skull graphic. And this is just a standard black one. But I thought I'd show you those. And so the next one, I, I pretty much, I start the show with this one. Uh, and then I do my solo in the middle of the show with the Schroeder here. This is an extended solo. Yes, during Atomic, that's my big, that's my moment to shine. But I, 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 I I've shown, a, I've, I've shined a lot. I don't really, uh, I need to change the solo. I need to rewrite something. Oh, yeah? yeah, I've been playing the same solo for three years. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is the, this is the one I started out with Blondie years ago, and. Um, How long have you been with Blondie? Three, three years. Yeah. So this is the one that's went out with me that first tour, and it's gone everywhere. You know, it's starting to. This is great. I love these. I love it when this stuff happens. You know, it's it's there. It's probably road worn. Oh yeah, and it's the back of it's all beat up and looks like it's had drumsticks thrown at it. <laughs> oh, that came from. Uh, but yeah, this is the one that's been with me. It's 22 frets, uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. Um, I can't even guess what's in there. It's been a while, but uh, if I had to guess, it's probably a 59 neck. Or I'm sorry, 59 bridge up here in the neck position and a super distortion or a distortion something distortion in the in the bridge that's what's in there and yeah three-way toggle right here i have speed pots uh the ying Bay speed pots in all of my guitars that seymour made recently that seymour duncan came out with recently um, all the volumes are are those and two piece it's you know this has been in a handful of <laughs> handful of videos and everything so and it's still the one you know i i can always go back to it if there's ever ever a venue or where i'm just like oh, this is, nothing's working give me the you know give me the schroeder chopper so that's it it's your workhorse that is it'll always be out here with me and then i have the uh my backup guitar which is also the guitar i use a, a heavily in the studio is a 2003 r7 gold top and it is um, one of the one. It's got a Brazilian rosewood board, which which the Schroeder did as well. And that Schroeder. Do you like the feel of that? Yeah, uh, I, the feel of this. It's got the biggest neck. So if I'm kind of exhausted, it's hard to play. <laughs> if I'm not up for the challenge, but that's why it's my studio guitar. But I also know how it sounds the best. I think Rami said that's his baby. Yeah, yeah, he did. He loves this thing. He <laughs> takes care of it. In fact, there were times where I'll ask for a guitar, and he's like, and you the know, one? the one. Now I'm gonna. I'm, <laughs> he's on, he always pushes this one, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a stock guitar. There's nothing, you know, other than the the, cow, the you know the Dunlop strap locks. That's other than that, it's just a stock R7. The Brazilian rosewood board thing kind of makes it different than every all the other ones. I think they made a couple hundred of them in 2003, and that's it. So that one gets uh, used whenever another time. It's you know when when I'm feeling weird about the venue or having an odd night. I can always go to a Les Paul on my chopper, and, and like you know, that's that's what I started with. I know that. How do you feel about the venue tonight? 
Uh, I like it a lot. It's beautiful here, and I like the sound of everything. I like big stages, you know. Um, I kind of like how they eat up sound. You know, it's nice. So, and then, uh, but yeah, so, so you'll probably be playing mostly your spark blue yeah, sparkle. Oh yeah, I love my, I love if my sparkle guitar works, and I love playing it because it's it's uh, it's kind of bright and sparkly and flashy, and it's and I, I these guys these guys are really nice because they they remind me a lot of uh, hot rod cars, the way that Doug designs his guitars. Yeah, it has a very hot rod uh, appeal. And that's that's probably the sparkle in the Bigsby. You know, you throw that on top of there, and it makes makes it even more 50s hot rod, 60s hot rod thing. Um, we Do have, you use the Bigsby a lot? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When I took it off this one, I find myself like I, I still use this on the same songs, and so I play. I'll play a part, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's right, it's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Bigsby on that this guitar anymore. So we have that. Uh, so those are the four electrics I use. Uh, there's one song in the show that I play a nylon string, for uh, like a Spanish flamenco type thing, and it's right over here. We'll uh, yeah, I'll lift it up and bring it over here. It is on a. It's on a Gracie stand. So what song do you play this one? Wipe off my sweat. It has a. Uh, it's it's. I do. I I just the past three shows I've switched over from doing the solo on this to doing it on an electric. Uh, we just, I, I think, I think we're all just, we were all just bored. But everyone seems to like it more. I think it's just because it's different. Oh, so you were playing it on electric, now you're playing it on the yeah. Taylor? Yeah, I was, playing, I was playing the solo on this. And then, and then recently, the couple shows ago at Soundcheck, I, for the heck of it, I did it on the electric guitar. And I was like, that was amazing. We should, you should do that. So what are you going to do tonight? I would be the electric. Yeah, we're still in that phase. We're, we're still in that phase of, of things right now. Because, uh, yeah, for a year, for a couple of years, it was always on this. But it's, it's cool, so I wear the guitar on my back and stuff. But this so you're switching great. things up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, during the middle of the show, I'm thinking a lot. Are you? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of changes going on. I've got my solos. I've got guitar changes. I'm, I'm you know, literally from here to there. It's, you'll see it's a really fast change. I think I have an eighth note to end this. Turn the volume down. <laughs> Come up here and start playing right away. Um, but, yeah, this is an NS, uh, NS74CE. It's a it's a stock tailor. It's great. Every you know the the front of house guy loves this thing plugged right in, and it sounds great in my in my ears. Um, there's not much. Uh, yeah. Is that just that one song that acoustic play, is played on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every now and then we'll throw in an acoustic song where I strum an acoustic, and and then it's always you know I have a tailor acoustic laying around here probably in the in the uh, in the gear truck. <laughs> but yeah, that that those are the five guitars I use. All right, Tommy. Let's look at your pedal board. What are you What are you playing tonight? Uh, let's see. I've played virtually the same pedal board for the last couple of years. I, I, this one's come off a few times because we had to went through a few different ones of those. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just plug in through the compressor, the Pictronics Philosopher's Tone up there in the upper left hand corner, and then I'm, I, I'm this isn't 100 percent, but I'm pretty certain it goes into the Wah, which is a a, a Clyde full tone Clyde. Uh, I think. Yep. And then it goes from the Clyde into the new Whammy 5, which is awesome. You can do the a chord thing now, and it has the classic Whammy effect, and you can also do chords. So this one just came out, and it's amazing. Um, and then it goes from there, I think, into my uh, Pictronics phaser up there on the upper right-hand corner, which is great because it's an envelope filter on one side and then a phaser on the other side. So I can do a lot of the, uh, uh, like, the, the, like the rapture sound I do with that to get an, like a, an envelope, an auto wah type thing. Then from there, I think it goes Wait, in. It's gonna sound stupid, but these two are similar. What are they? This is a new. Uh, this is an envelope. Uh, this okay. is a like a. Uh, I'm trying to think a what, a trim a trimvelope is what it's called, and uh, I'm working that in. That's kind of like a, an auto tremolo, but it, you can you can adjust the speed based on how much you play. Your dynamic of how hard you hit the strings mm -hmm. is how fast it might go, or how it, it's it's really complicated, and that's I'm working it in there. Um, but so you that, have some homework to do. Yes, that's my that's my homework <laughs> pedal. I just got that um, from David out there, Pictronics, and um, so I have I haven't really played with it that much. And that's actually in the effects loop, and I don't like it in the effects loop. I got to put it up front. So that that it's being worked in. But after the phaser, uh, you go over here to the Aria Pictronics Aria, and that's been on there forever. Um, these two guys go everywhere. Even in your other gigs, like you play with Rock yeah, of Ages. Another one of these. Oh no! Well, Rock of Ages. No, we have the Fractals. Sweet. Yeah. So this is your pedal board yes. only this for my blonde. Live. This is okay. my this is this is the Blondie pedal board. I have another pedal board for other things. Okay. <laughs> this one travels with Blondie. Um, so What's your must-have pedal? Must-have pedal. All of them? No, the DD5. 
Why? Because it's the best dotted eighth note delay, and that's all it does. It's in, you know, the taps over here. And um, it's set up literally just for dotted eighth note, you know, the U2 stuff, pop stuff, things like that. Um, but yeah, that, and those, that's, in the, that's in the effects loop. The DL4 is in the effects loop. This is great because it's obviously, you know, the classic DL4. Everybody knows this pedal by now. It's the three delays with the tap. And I've got a short delay for solos and stuff like that. This is a long delay. And then I have um, reverse delay. We just interviewed a guitarist who had four of those on his pedal board. Well, <laughs> if you need 12 <laughs> delay settings <laughs> to be able to pull up 12 delay settings, and that's important. Um, then I think the other one, uh, and then I guess just the Sequa. Uh, this is a Cusack modded Sequa 1, you know, so you can tap the, the tempo of it and all that stuff. I love this thing. It's great. It's fun for when you're feeling uh, creative. Do you play that on any songs on the Blondie show? One section of one song. What's on mother, mother at the end of the bridge well, i'm well, supposed well. to make some crazy noise so so at the very end i just i just tap it as fast as i can you know just eight wah pedals you know cycling works. through as fast as possible as long as i turn it off you know before the uh before the chorus comes in yes it works <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then the ernie ball you know volume pedal juniors i just like those because i have a lot of pedals and i don't need a a bigger volume pedal so I'm happy with the Junior. And the whole board was made by Step Up Guitars. The coolest part's on the front, if you can see it. I would go look at that. And then we uh, have a little, see that? And then you have the little light. Is that, did, can you see that? Or is there too much light going on there? So there's that. It I can up. see it. Yeah, you light. Um, I never use that, but it's- And it's, that's just for fun, right? It's total, Doesn't make sounds. It's a total novelty <laughs> act right there. You will never see that in the show. <laughs> Unless I accidentally, you know, <laughs> tap it. Um, let's see, that's it. Step Up Guitars, uh, Norton cables, wired everything, all the blue cables. You put everything together for me. So should we take a look at your amps now? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what are you playing through tonight? I have a Soldano, uh, Soldano SLO 100. There on the bottom. And I only use the, uh, the clean channel on the crunch setting, but um, the channel twos have got a lot of gain. So, and I, I have a P90 guitar, so it's kind of a squealy. I'd rather, all you need? I'd, I'd rather play loud and uh, uh, play loud with less gain than play soft with more gain. <laughs> so, Sounds good. And um, yeah, those are the settings. It's pretty simple. There's a series effects loop in it. Uh, I run it on the 100 watt mode. Do you always play Saldanos? Uh, here I do. And I have the Fractals and the Rock of Ages. Uh, in my studio, I have Marshalls, old, old Marshalls that I wouldn't take out on the road. The, I mean, the Saldanos are built like a tank. They're nothing will. I've, I've never had a problem with the thing. It's got the tubes. The tubes are still in it that are that are original that I got three years ago, and it's been around the world, thrown probably I'm sure off many semi trucks that I don't want to know about, <laughs> and it still works. So there's that, and then I run it through a, a 212 Saldano cabinet with Weber speakers, and the uh, those uh, it's it's the it's the equivalent of a vintage 30, the Weber you know the Weber. Uh, Equivalent. So did you choose to put those speakers in there or? Yes, yeah, I used to use vintage 30s and those are great because they, they're broken in really well. Uh, they're lighter, <laughs> they are a lot lighter than vintage 30s. So when, I, when we took the vintage 30s out of there and compared them with the two Weber speakers, it's, you're talking pounds and pounds, you know, you're talking four, probably four pounds wow. lighter than a, than a vintage 30. The magnet, I don't know what it is. I'm not a, I just know I lifted it and I'm like, well, that's you know, taking a lot of weight off a cabinet. <laughs> So that the, so you know, Ramy, our guitar tech, loves that. <laughs> he loves the, taking pounds off. Well, yeah, he loves that he doesn't have to break <laughs> his back when he lifts up our cabinets. And you know, Chris has the same ones in his speak, in his cabinet as well. And then Weber also, uh, I'm using a Weber attenuator back there. Uh, that's on the. I don't know if, if you guys probably saw what that. Are those pandas. Those are Chris's little. You know, <laughs> those are Chris's little uh, children that come along with us. Are those stock or modded? Uh, they look modded. They're pretty modded. Yeah, I don't think you could find those, and you might be able to find them in Chinatown, maybe. They look, they look like something you could find in the back of a dark store. Well, we are in Chicago, so. so. I'm sure Chicago has a place for that, too. <laughs> All right, Tommy, well, thank you so much for speaking with us. I hope you have, it's your last show on the tour, right? It's the last show with Devo. With Devo. Yeah, we well, still have, yeah. You're going to rock out tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me. This is Tessa Jeffers with PremierGuitar.com.